I've had this Nintendo Switch since the release of the system in 2017. It's played hundreds of hours of several different games and hasn't missed a beat throughout my whole ownership. However, one stormy night, I turned on my Switch with 100% battery. I started to play Mario Kart 8, only to find shortly after it dropped to 40%. My conclusion, my Switch battery now sucked ass. But in all seriousness, while there wasn't any problem with the system software or other hardware, over the last year or so it became apparent that the battery had succumbed to severe degradation. What was the solution I hear you ask? Well, there was only one. To depart with 300 great British pounds for the Switch OLED, of course. Permission. Yeah, I shouldn't be trusted with financial decisions. So, with that being said, I guess it's time to find out whether, after three weeks, is it actually worth the switch? Well, I'll get straight to the point. The answer would be... yes? It's not something which would be the same answer for everyone, specifically due to the fact that there are three other Switch models outside of the OLED. For example, you have the Switch version 1, that's the one that has a bad battery, you have the Switch version 2, which is the same as the one, except it has improved battery. And then the Switch Lite. If you have the Switch version 2, then there's less of a need to go out and buy the OLED model, unless you have the spare funds and want it. However, when it comes to the Switch version 1 and the Switch Lite, I think this is where the recommendations can vary. For example, I have the version 1 Switch, and the battery life is rather poor after 3 or 4 years. That's kind of expected. Furthermore, I typically play in handheld, meaning that I don't often see the upscaled gameplay if I put it in a dock. With that in mind, for me it made sense, at least that's what I tell myself, to do the upgrade as having an improved battery and OLED screen are things I would see and reap the benefits of. However, if you're someone who mainly plays in docked mode, then the battery and screen don't really matter as much, especially since the internals are the exact same in the OLED. When it comes to the Switch Lite, the answer becomes a little more complicated. Firstly, it depends on the type of gamer you are. Are you happy with being locked into handheld only? Obviously the Lite doesn't have detachable Joy-Cons, so certain games are restricted. However, if this isn't a big deal to you, and you enjoy the compact portability of the Lite, then there isn't a desperate need. However, I think it's still worth considering, as due to Lite owners being dedicated handheld players, you'll definitely see the improvements by playing with an OLED panel. However, I think the best way to show the difference in screen resolution and quality is to compare the same game side by side. I tried using the most colourful examples, that being Mario Odyssey, specifically the Metro Kingdom. As you can see, the colours are much more rich, specifically the lights and the building windows, as well as the overall brightness of the OLED screen. That goes hand in hand with the overall clarity of the picture being much more crisp. As you can see, there's sort of a yellow hazy look to the original Switch LCD screen. While it isn't drastically worse, there is a clear difference, and it depends on what you prioritise. In terms of actual performance differences, well, there aren't actually any. While games may look better on the OLED Switch, it won't perform any better than other Switch including the cheapest Switch model, that being the Lite. Think of it like the Switch version 1 is the cupcake and the OLED Switch is sort of that same cupcake but with icing on top. Either way, you're still getting a cupcake, just one has a bit more of a flair to it. This begs the question of whether the Switch OLED is actually worth it. So far, we've only clarified that its main difference is the increased size of its OLED screen. Yes, it is lovely, and yes, it does bring a new element to playing in handheld. However, this alone doesn't justify buying it if you already own one. Thank God this isn't the only thing then. I mean, come on guys, you get an improved kickstand. I'm actually not joking when I say this is on par with the improved quality of the screen. Having to use the flimsy piece of plastic on the version 1 and version 2 switch was a bloody nightmare. If you bump the table, it falls over. If you sneeze, it falls over. If you look at the switch wrong, it falls over. 
but with the OLED comes hope. Praise the Nintendo gods for they've graced us with this beauty. No matter what you do, this thing will not fall over. It's also great competition for if you're doing the limbo. Furthermore, it comes with an increased base storage, up from 32GB to 64GB. Still not incredible, but if you're mainly someone who plays physical cartridges, then you should be fine. Well, that's the end of the video. Uh, make sure to leave a like, uh, so you can push this video into the faces of other people on this weird platform. And uh, hey, maybe subscribe, because you can change your mind at any point and it's free to do so. Alright, catch you next time.